Meanwhile, the Afrikaans enclave of Orania along the Karoo region of the Northern Cape province has decided to go solar to rid itself of uh, power utility ESCOM's unreliable electricity supply. Boosted by an enthusiastic community, the area plans to expand the already existing infrastructure to include storage of generated electricity. It has, however, warned that expanding Orosol requires enterprising leadership and clear vision. Joining us now for more on the project is Yus Strait, I've heard of the Orania movement. Yus, good evening, good to have you with, with us tonight here on In Focus. As the rest of the country, including parts of the Northern Cape, are currently undergoing stage six load shedding, is the Orania municipality affected at all? Thank you for the opportunity. It's uh, lovely to speak to you and uh, put Orania's uh, case uh, out there. Orania is currently developing infrastructure that would include um, uh, this, this, the handling of electricity problems that is facing the country countrywide. However, Orania is not fully independent electricity wise yet. <clears throat> I think the important thing to, to, to put on the table or to state now is that the Urania idea was always one where we focused on creating our own institutions. Um, and things like Urasol uh, is, uh, is the, the, the reaction in terms of years and years of working yeah. with the specific mindset. The Urania community all, all, always uh, attracted the type of person that would like to be self-sufficient and take control of their own affairs, including electricity. So yes, um, there is still um, uh, load shedding in Urania as well. However, Urasol can currently carry up to 30% of our community electricity needs if you count also the private initiatives that we have been incentivizing in Urania to get private residents and business owners to get their own systems and grid tie them as well. Yeah, 841 kilowatts or 0 0.41 megawatts is what you're currently producing through Urasol. What does that mean for the 30% who are currently connected under this phase one. Yes, you're absolutely correct. That is the first phase. And I think that's the important thing to remember when we speak about Urania's own institutions and development of those. Everything that we do in Urania is funded by ourselves or by our supporters. As our municipality don't get any state funding, uh, everything is funds that we raised ourselves and uh, or that we invested ourselves. Meaning that we have to do projects like these in phases. Uh, this is the first phase of what I saw, and the second phase would be one where we expand our capacity to actually put back into the grid, back into the ESCOM grid, to create more electricity than that we currently need for ourselves. And thirdly, the, the third phase, uh, I don't know what to call it the final phase, because I'm sure there will be many, many phases after that, but the third phase for now would be to actually invest in storage capacity to a point where Urania can have uh, total energy independence from 6 a.m. to 10 p.m., meaning that the entire economic segment plus uh, a bit of the, uh, the comfort segment at the night uh, is, uh, is fully looked after for yeah. our residents and our citizens. I think the important thing is Orania's economy is growing so fast that we have to, we need to uh, create um, uh, alternative options in our energy master plan and our city development plan to make sure that our economy can keep growing okay. and keep growing on a, on a sustainable way. And the, the way to be sustainable in South Africa is to take responsibility for yourself as we are doing here in Urania yeah. via Urasol and other infrastructure initiatives. So, yes, what, what I'm still not understanding, I, I want you to tell me exactly how the 30% are benefiting from this. So you're saying you are uh, via Urasol pumping into the Orania municipality. So those 30% are buying directly uh, from the Orania municipality, electricity supplied by, uh, uh, by Urasol. How does it affect their bill? How does it affect their security of electricity? Oh, okay, that's important. I think that the first thing is, uh, as I said, that Orania still have an ESCOM connection, meaning that uh, putting solar power into the grid um, the 30% of households is, um, is something that uh, it's not symbolic, but it's in terms of uh, the usage through the day that we are not, um, and we do, do not need ESCOM to, to fill that requirement for, for, for that level of energy. Uh, that does not mean that we are all load shedding free, um, but that's, uh, that does mean that we can supply uh, basic services fully in terms of our water and sewage supplies that can continue working, all those very important basic services can continue
feeding you um, uh, directly from the from the solar farm. The 30% that I refer to is the amount of um, households that we are uh, actually uh, able to service with our own uh, uh, with our soil infrastructure. We do not have storage capacity yet. As I said, that will be in the third phase. So that means that it's a grid tied system. Yeah. It's a question of buying directly from the municipality, but buying electricity that was actually uh, uh, created by the Wurasol solar panel, so solar panel system. Uh, there's about 1,890 solar panels, uh, and that is the, the, the current load that we can, that, that we can pay straight to households. So are you saying uh, uh, you are the current setup is direct proof that IPPs without backup battery storage would simply mean we are just literally pumping electricity back into the ESCOM grid. It, 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 it would really not make much of a difference unless you have your own battery storage that uh, can assist you to get electricity as and when you, you want it. No, I would not say that. I would say it makes a massive difference. Firstly and foremostly, because of uh, the level of trouble that municipalities are in around the country in terms of not being able to provide basic services, while we can actually do that, we created a parallel system to power basic services and keep water running, keep sewage running, all those very basic and very important services can continue. Secondly, uh, we, can, we can sell electricity that we created ourselves in terms of the internal um, structures of what yeah. meaning that we can actually make money and invest that in the second and third phase. And thirdly, um, it means that the electricity uh, is, is, is much cheaper yeah. uh, for us. So in the, in, the, in the first phase, yes, that is the practical implication that there are not, no storage capacity. However, we as a municipality incentivize private owners, businesses, and so forth to create their own systems as well. We make it very handsome. Uh, to, to put back into the grid and sell to the municipality if you uh, would like to call it that. And there's massive advantages. So we incentive, we decentralize electricity yeah. into the household, into the people, and then also into plants like what I saw. How difficult is the process of registration? I mean, you're saying even before this process of uh, uh, load shedding, you were already having plans to be self-sufficient. And so this process has, has long started for you. It's, it's, it's not uh, uh, been given rise to by the current uh, state of load shedding. But you, you are still kind of hung up on this process of registering with NERSA. Uh, wh what's the difficulty? Uh, I don't think there's much difficulty. The, pr the, the actual construction of where I saw started within the last year, and it was finished on time and on budget um, and on an investor-based model which makes it uh, very successful because we can, uh, it, it uh, creates an aspect of sustainability, which is obviously very important. Um, the registration with the National Energy Regulator is a process that's almost done, meaning that we are going to reach a point very soon uh, where we can um, feed a, a large amount of electricity back into the grid and get credits for that in the future, actually sell to independent third parties. So if you are sitting in Johannesburg or Pretoria, you could actually buy power or electricity from Urania. Um, so that would be later stages. Yeah. But uh, the, the, the registration is not much powerful. Uh, we, we recently started it, and the, the fast growth of the current infrastructure also um, re required us to actually um, register for a much larger uh, yeah. project than we initially planned because, uh, because uh, yes, we had the idea of... Um, of solar and more alternative energy very early, but obviously load shedding uh, prioritized it a, a lot in our city development, development plan with other infrastructure quite important as well, but now we are uh, obviously prioritizing energy. Yeah. Uh, as we can see, all energy is either getting more scarce or more expensive. So energy yeah. in general, as part of our energy master plan, is very important, um, not, just, not just electricity. We need to be thinking uh, wider as well. Yeah. I'll tell you why I'm asking, because, you know, uh, after the announcement of the license exemption for uh, producers who, who, who produce uh, to the limit of 100 megawatts of, of power, particularly municipalities, uh, uh, of course, there was one thing left. It was this question of registration. And there have been questions from, from other private players who are saying it's quite, it's quite cumbersome. So... 
what, what are some of the requirements for you to be able to be registered so that you, you are able to, to feed your electricity directly to the ESCOM grid? Uh, important part of that is the technical requirements. Uh, when you're feeding back into the ESCOM grid, uh, you need to have very, very stable um, inverters, and that specs must be on a, on a very, um, uh, very specific level in order to make sure that you feed uh, sustainable and healthy uh, um, stream of energy back into the grid. So those inspections and those requirements are obviously very important. Um, I just spoke to the project manager today at Warasol, and he stated that the process is, is going uh, very well. And yeah, I, I can't give you specific uh, technical data on, on what the specific requirements would be, but I know that, uh, that the registration process is actually going quite well. Yeah. How important is that fellow, the project manager, in this whole process? Very important. Uh, I think the, the main thing of Urania, as I said, getting no money from the state. Uh, it's always a question of how much money and how much resources can you raise, can you mobilize in order to pursue your goal. So we are here in the, in the Northern Cape. It is a semi-desert piece of land. Um, out here, you need to make infrastructure work on multiple levels. Everything is very expensive, meaning that the Urania model is one where you need to commercialize the things that you do for the community. So where an, another community has, for example, just the local police are looking after them and they have uh, state institutions and clinics and things like that, everything in Urania needs to be created on a basis where it's functional and sustainable in terms of its commercialization. We have to work with the private sector here because we have no state sector. Uh, we also obviously have friends internationally and friends locally that helps us, support us and so on, but everything needs to be sustainable. So uh, uh, a person like Rian Jacobs, which is the, the project manager at Morasol, needs to be up to date with the latest uh, technical uh, issues regarding solar. He needs to understand the electricity grid in Urania as a whole. He needs to understand the regulations. And while doing all that, he also needs to be able to mobilize the resources and give an investor-based model for people to actually invest in our solar farms. The Urania Dorpskantoor, our municipality, also played a major role in, 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 in getting some funds into the project to get it going because they know and prioritize um, sustainable energy. So now I would say uh, any manager, any project manager, any every Urania is important because uh, all of us needs to play a combined and focused role um, in, in, you know, making our, making our plans work. Uh, there's a lot of challenges, but there's, there's more plans than challenges. Yours, we appreciate you, and thank you very much uh, for coming on and sharing uh, this information with us. Yours, uh, uh, Stradham, head of uh, the Orania movement there, uh, giving us uh, how they are doing it, uh, particularly this phase one and the ensuing uh, phases still to come up to phase three when they will be storing their own and, of course, uh, covering that whole town.